So many of you have heard about solar energy. You don't know what to, what to believe. What, I'm going to fill you in and tell you the story. The sun delivers more energy to our Earth in one day than the entire population of Earth can use in one year. And it's not a political speech. This is the truth. <laughs> so, yet, less than 1% of our energy that powers cars, homes, appliances comes from the sun. So today, what we see is that China, Spain, Germany, these numbers are a little higher than what we have in the United States. It isn't easy converting those photons and electricity in a cost-effective way, in a way that can be a sustainable source that can be competitive with coal, natural gas, or nuclear fission. But why am I so optimistic that solar is on the cusp of revol a revolution? Why do I think that it can meet those costs of coal in the next decade? And the prices keep plunging. The cost per kilowatt hour has dropped dramatically from 2010 to 2011. It's hit 10 to 15 cents a kilowatt hour. Look at your bills today. Look at what you're paying today. Where do we need, for every single one of you here in the audience, to want to put solar on your home? We need to be at 5 cents a kilowatt hour. What is it going to take? Where, how are we going to get there? What's going to happen? In order to make the choice, we need to have disruptive technologies. We need to support out-of-the-box ideas, innovation. We need to support small startups that can take technologies and actually make them hit that number of 5 cents per kilowatt hour. We have current technologies today, like silicon. is 90% of our industry. This is what you all see when you're walking down the streets and you see it on homes. Where do we need to be? How do we get there? I work at the National Renewable Energy Lab. I manage an incubator program. This company uh, is funded by the Department of Energy. And what I do is I enable small startups to take their technologies, these out-of-the-box technologies, and make them occur today. And so with a lo lots of love and a clean solution, we can make these technologies happen. I'm part of an R&D 100 award that is called the Aminex 7700 CPV generator. This technology is being deployed currently in Alamosa, Colorado. 30 megawatts are being deployed down there. What does this do? This technology takes a small solar cell the size of your pinky, and with optics, this, this uh, truly the size of an IMAX theater can power 500 homes at the same price as coal today. I'm encouraged because the search for new ways to make solar more affordable has led us to thin films, which led us to new materials such as cadmium and telluride. And there's a new company producing solar cells much thinner than the human hair. And how thick is our human hair, does anybody know? It's about 10 microns, so can you imagine if it's smaller and thinner than the human hair? It's like processing eggs. How are you going to manufacture these things and so that they don't crack? I'm enthusiastic because there's companies such as Novalite that are taking traditional silicon and turning it into silicon ink. We call it the liquid gold. I'm confident that solar can go mainstream because the revolution is global. America is producing innovation. Chinese is able to manufacture, and we are providing competitiveness for China today. Governments here and around the world need to support these investments in these small startups companies. We need to take these technologies, enable them to get them off their wobbly baby feet and get them running. I'm not sure what kind of soles that they're going to need to get, whether it's the air cushion of a Nike or an Asics, but we need to get them running. America and the world have plenty of smart people to get the job done if the path is cleared for them. I did my graduate degree here at the University of Denver. I had the opportunity to do all my research at the National Renewable Energy Lab. And I was kibitzing with Dr. Coombs, the chancellor, and he recalled that I had been in the lab working on the lasers. We need to clear pathways for more students, more um, education, so that, uh, that we have a clean alternative choice. We need to be able to provide for our children a pathway and say, look, those are solar panels on somebody's house. I was driving home my uh, son and his kids from lacrosse practice, and my son said, hey, there's solar panels. And when one kid said, what's a solar panel? And my son Harrison said, dude, you don't know what a solar panel is? So we need to educate our children. We need to get the message out. And it starts with people, uh, youth, the five, the six-year-olds. Even my uh, kindergarten came um, home the other day with a book called Energy Island. 
She wanted me to read it to her. And then she saw another picture in our house that was a windmill. And she said, Mom, is this what wind energy is about? This is where it starts. It starts with our children. It builds us all the way up through DU, through many universities, and, and we'll get innovation out. So the future belongs to renewable energy. There isn't enough oil, natural gas, or coal to fuel where the world is heading. We need to enable the scientists. We need to enable the collaboration. We need to, we need to push disruptive technologies out there. With tough love, we will get there. It's only the disruptive technologies that will make it to large-scale manufacturing. This innovation will be the sequel to the sunshot and the moonshot of the 1960s. Thank you.